also looking at the security situation in the country, and uh, we're going over to our Abuja studios where Ibrahim Modibo joins us. He is of the Verbatim newspaper. Uh, good morning, and thanks uh, for joining us. Uh, you've been actually covering and uh, so many situations are happening in Nigeria's northeast. Uh, how would you assess the situation as it is now? I didn't get you. How would you assess the switch situation in uh, the northeast? Well, um, uh, Mr. Suleiman, thank you very much for inviting me to this. Ibrahim Modibo, if you can hear me, uh, I, perhaps a lot of people have been talking uh, about what's uh, recent happenings in the Northeast. Uh, we would like to have your assessment of happenings uh, there. Yeah, thank, thank you very much, uh, Suleiman. In the Northeast, it's just like what Kalmaya says, there is a zone that has fallen. The Northeast is a place where one could safely say is the theater of the absurd or a theater, or at best, a theater of war where we are directly involved. I am from the Northeast. And I can tell you with all degree of sincerity, we are under war, and I'm telling you, he who that wears the shoes knows where it pinches. And I'm taking from experience, we are a people that are seriously in trouble. I think there is no clear demonstration of vision or mission in trying to subdue this insurgency. Let's look at it from the sociological or psychological viewpoint. The emergence of the Boko Haram or Boko Haram as it is, is an offshoot of some youths that feels that education, instead of being a blessing, it has been a cause. In the sense that most of them, most of the Boko Haramists at the beginning, most of them, or up to this present in time, they are all educated people. If not, there is no how an illiterate can come and start putting chemicals to make a bomb a local bomb to destroy human lives and property. I can tell you they are educated people, and they've seen how the democratic governance has been able to turn the zone, in particular in Nigeria as a whole, in a kind of a topsy-turvy, where the people have not been able to benefit directly from the government. There has been failure of governance, in the sense that the democratic atmosphere has not been able to give people the democratic dividends they need. The latitude with which to secure jobs, the latitude with which to provide the necessary social, economic, and otherwise infrastructure to the people. And therefore, they feel that this democracy is all about looting. They feel that this democracy is all about lining the pockets of the few and then leaving the rest in poverty, penury, and hopelessness. It is in view of this fact that these people assembled to fight the system. These people have been driven by pur puritanical uh, vindictiveness. Vindictiveness in the sense that the inspiration to wage a war against the people or against the government has not been drawn from any scriptural perspective, whether it is Islam or Christianity. So they have decided to just go into the world and start killing people, maiming people, feeling that they are supposed to, feeling that you know the country should move towards more of puritanical uh, nuances rather than the democratic atmosphere in which it lives. And I think that is one of the most saddest and most unfortunate things that happened to this country. So when we look at the governors, democracy is all about government of the people, for the people, and by the people. They've seen that since this democracy started, 
not only the economy, but even the democratic space have been looted by the government, by the, 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 the party at the center. There's no free and fair election. And those that have been able to go, or, uh, I mean, assume leadership of the political space have not been able to do anything rather than lining their pockets. So these are some of the frustrations that these guys have had. But is that a justification for somebody to take arms against the government or against the leadership? If you ask me, I'll tell you no. They would have stood to form either a political party or a pressure group to say, look, we're tired and we want the government to change. So this is the way I think this uh, Boko Haram should move into. But looking at the North is in, at large, we are under serious political problems. With the state of emergency, our economy has been in comatose. The people have been devastated. They've been hopeless and helpless. The region has been completely destroyed. Where we see failure of either the military or the government to take care of his people, which is his vital social responsibility. We've seen that some villages, towns, and hamlets have been raised to the ground. And in terms of people, because of all these checkpoints, I want to social and economic activities have been crippled. And I can tell you that in Northeast, we are suffering. In Northeast, we feel we don't even have a sense of belonging because honestly and sincerely, government has not been able to do a lot. And how we wish that it to take up its responsibility to come to our aid and also look at the issues dispassionately. This is not time for politicking. It is time for serious reflection on the problems that the region has found itself into. Well, uh, 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 Ibrahim Modibo, just allow me to come in here. Uh, I think you've just uh, well given your assessment and uh, you painted a very grim picture. Uh, just uh, taking a cue from Dr. Adedeji, he said, well, there's been some neglect, which you also corroborated. But yeah. don't you think the question should have been directed at the leaders of those states? But uh, why would anyone go ahead and take innocent lives, especially of the ordinary people in your region? There is no justification whatsoever, whether moral social, religious, economic, or otherwise, to take a life. There's no moral justification. That's why I said, if you ask me, I do not have, there's no moral justification whatsoever for anybody to take up arms and kill innocent people. But you see, the failure of leadership, as I've said, democratic leadership, both from the state and the government, is what must have been responsible for this misadventure. And I think the Boko Haramis have not been doing any good to the people of the North is because we are the ones that are feeling the brunt directly. And we are the ones that have been suffering. Our economy is totally collapsed. The people are suffering every day, every checkpoint. You meet checkpoints unnecessarily. It delays your social and economic activities. And also the people have not even that liberty as Nigerians. All the people have been enjoying their liberty and freedom of expression and freedom of movement, but we've been curtailed because of the activities of these people. So what is the moral justification for killing innocent people? But you see, top government finance, they can't reach them because these people have had a lot of securities. But the ordinary man has no security. That's why we're calling on the government to take up its responsibility seriously so as to defend and also take care of the masses. Because the masses are the ones that are feeling the problem. The masses are the ones that are always at the receiving end. 